there were African women that also fought. And these women will fight so hard that they will never let Europeans to allow or to attach even a hair on their hair. And there comes a time the Europeans become so mad at them that they will have to send African women into this very room known as the female punishment cell. You stay there a week or 10 days, you get food and water once a day through that hole, which was also their source of light and air. And there was a very thick and heavy door like the one we saw on the condemned cell right here. There is a hole over there, that's where they had to urinate and defecate whilst in the cell. What does that go to? It's connected to, to the drainage, so when rain falls, all the water washes everything up into the sea. But then, let's look at something. In general, men and women in the dungeons of the castle only had pieces of cloth around their waist. Mm. That's all you will have for three months here, for three months on abort slave ships till you make it out there. Plus, as I said earlier, they never took a single shower. So you're not going to take a shower here for about three months, for about three months aboard sh the ships till you make it out here. And their last bath was taken about 31 kilometers away from here. So the question here is what's going to happen at that time of the month when all these am amazing black women are supposed to be menstruating? Simultaneously, mm. Exactly. So it means without sanitary towels provided them, that piece of cloth on your waist is what you will have to be using in wiping yourself up for three months here, for three months on the ship till you make it out there. And the question is, how comfortable will that be? So the women's dungeon, we have two parts. Each room holding about 150 African women. Going through the same things the men went through, but constantly the African women were abused sexually. So much so that they will find some of these women pregnant in the dungeons, they examine them thoroughly to be sure of their pregnancy. Then they had houses out of the castle, they send them there, they take care of them, you have your baby, the baby will be cared for. The mother stays there, never goes back here. And they were doing that because whenever they brought in European soldiers, they died quickly. If they are dying that quickly, we can't trust the local people to do anything for us. So it's best we educate our own mulatto, mulattoes and mulattresses. They grow up and become just like us, work for us here as interpreters, clerks, secretaries, and everything. They break the gap. I think that's why, I think that's why the trade lasted so long. Exactly. Because you had the mulatto. They all over. Didn't to the African side. Exactly. They to their yep. side. Yep. They just kept it going. So, with all of that going on, these women that went out there to have their kids stayed there and never went back here. But on the other hand, there were some women that were equally pregnant in the dungeons. The thing is, they rather found them pregnant aboard slave ships en route to the destinations. The Europeans would rather pick them up and toss them into the sea. Because at the destination, she becomes liability. She can't work for me to make money. I have to spend money on her. And what if that baby doesn't survive? Looking at all the conditions she'll be going through aboard a slave ship. Meanwhile, if I throw her into the sea, I have insured my ship and cargo. So I have insurance. I go to the insurance company, get my insurance money, which pays for the loss. So it's much better business picking her up, tossing her into the sea, than taking her alive. I have said people, these people are devils. And know that if you are talking about insurance, we have Lloyds of London. They played a major role in this. But aside that there came a time gold trade was not lucrative but rather slave trade was booming. So banks started financing ships, going down to Africa, getting captives, selling the Americas. And we are talking of Wall Street here. European Jews made we are talking of We are talking of Bank of America. Yes. We are talking of Barclays Bank. Yes. And all the ones that you know. Yes. And, and all the European Jew conglomerates. Exactly. That is filthy rich nowadays. Uh-huh. So you realize all of them people. had their fair share of this. Just like now, they all know putting big money into prison um, penitentiary exactly. systems. Exactly. Investing in it, sending black men there, making more money. Same thing. So I, I, I ask people, how do, what do you define these people as? More than just devils, demons, wicked, evil people. Yeah, because there's anything worse than that, because that would be what the name, yeah. that, what the attribute would be. <laughs> exactly. All right, so 
We will go and see the women's dungeons. So family is not just the past, it is the present. Yes, yeah, it's, yeah, it's and, today. Yeah, we have to be careful, yeah, can it, it can be the future. That, 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 is, that is why I always tell people that come here that, hey, everything that happened in the past, still going on today. We gotta stop, we gotta stop being so universal. Yeah, it's still going on today. And I hope you guys charge a lot higher for the Urugu, the doubles when they come here. I hope you do that quadruple That would be, that would be fair. If you must have them in here, then I hope you get, yeah, because yeah, it's not, uh-uh. Yeah, it's true. Uh -uh. What you're saying is right. And we should get a discount. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. over there we have the door of no return. And I want you all to know that the door of no return, whoever walked out of it never, ever came back. You walk out of that very door, you end up losing everything as an African on the continent of Africa. You lose it. You are stripped off of your name, your family, properties, dignity taken away. They send you out there on board a slave ship, which is named Liberty and so many other things. And Jesus. And Jesus and all of that. Your, your family always amazed me how people can still be so devoted to Christianity after all of this. Yeah. It's just, I never, you know, things like this just should just make you lose your religion. Let's hold up. So then, they walk out of the door, and the stairs we are going to see going down the show happens to be the very original stairs they always used down. Whenever they went down there, the soil you are going to see there now became the last African, African soil, African men and women ever touched on the continent of Africa, because the boats were there. If you get on board that boat, you don't touch soil again until you are in the New World or in Europe. And it was estimated that over the period of 200 years in Cape Coast Castle, there were about 4 million Africans that walked out of the door of No Return. But then the question is, of all the people that went out, did all of them survive? No. So, let's see. People were packed aboard slave ships, one on top of the other, just like books on shelves. And you will find yourself at the bottom of the deck, Fetus, urine, people Vomit. vomiting because of seasickness and all of that dripping down. But then, as they always say, mortality rate was so high. So only about 20% of the people lost their lives aboard slave ships. But on the other hand, there were some Africans that believed that if they jumped on the board and had everything over there, their spirit will still stay in Africa. Right. So then, what about them? And there were shackles and chains on them. So if, let's say, they we are five in a line, I jump, I go down with everyone else. Yep. <laughs> so you end up realizing that about 40% of the African men and women lost their lives aboard slave ships. Mm -hmm. Then they got 60% alive in the Americas. But look at something. They would have sold the people here with money. Yes. So they didn't pay money for them. Right. They only gave second-hand materials out to get them. So with my insurance, I go there, I get my insurance money, which gives me about thousands of dollars. It's more lucrative than even have, having to keep the people. Yes, brother. Brother, I just have a real quick question. All right. Uh, with all the knowledge that you've shared and all, with all the history that you have under your belt, could you just give the people maybe a, a educated <laughs> guesstimate um, on the figures of people of Africans that we lost, whether through that the acid ma uh, matzo, yeah. uh, on the way over to the dungeons, well, at the dungeons, th and th th those that were lost, I will tell you sincerely, that yeah. was not even documented. Right. <laughs> Never. Right. So there's no, there's no Never. There's no number in any book that this number lost its life, their lives. But you're looking at at least a hundred plus million. Yeah, yeah plus 100, 100. more, more than that. Because let's let's start from intertribal wars, people dying from intertribal wars, from raiding and everything, bringing them from there all the way down. People dying on the way, all the way down here. People dying in the dungeons of the castle, and people dying on board slave ships, and people being killed in the Americas. So like. And it, it, it's about, it, it took 400 years. Right. So you do the math, it's, it's a lot. That is why they don't talk about it. Just swept under the rug. Exactly. We want to be universal right now. They don't talk about it. So well, let's walk out of the door of the return. Let's see what's out there. Please get me straight. Well, when we go out, believe me, 
that we are going to go back here victorious. Amen. Amen.